This will be the plague with which the Lord shall strike all men. We are all that's left of a city beyond redemption. Fulfilling our sacred duty to free the souls of the damned. Good to go up here! Mindset. That should hold. Father, forgive us. We shed this blood in the name of mercy. can we expect to be using in this game? We have really gone for it with the weapons. There's a huge number. You've got three classes of weapons. You've got your primary, your secondary, and your heavy. Um, primary weapons, we've got something for everybody. We've got uh, assault rifles, we've got shotguns, we've got sawn off shotguns, we've got crossbows uh, with exploding tips, uh, no less. Um, and we've got SMGs, um, a variety of different of those weapons. Secondaries, we've got silenced pistols, sawn off double barrel shotguns, and then heavy, we've got uh, rapid-fire combat shotguns, RPGs, heavy machine guns. We've gone for as much as we possibly can. You actually, like, with your with your cadence, your, your speech pattern, and your <laughs> accent, you sound like you could be, like, a nefarious, like, <laughs> weapons dealer. Yeah. Like, you, like, opened the trunk, and you were just listing off all the stuff you have for sale and stuff. Yeah. Nice work. Have very you good. seen that scene in Taxi Driver where he goes to buy a gun? He's like, it's a very nice gun. I got this gun. Yes. That's, that's me now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah. I'll be Travis Pick. Okay. That's scary, but yeah, okay, let's do it. All right. So the hordes of zombies in this game, I, I think it's very, very unique because, like in the movie, yeah. they're going to just be constantly running over each other, and, yeah. and that means that they could be piling on top of each other and then yes, running over the pile. So, yeah. you know, they'd be able to maybe possibly reach you on the second floor yeah. where you think you're perfectly safe. Oh, yeah. So I think that's a really interesting thing to bring to this genre, especially. I mean, we're we're pretty much getting used to fast zombies. You can zombies. see right there; they're actually pyramiding up there now. It is. Oh my god! And climbing the that's, walls. To me, that is terrifying. If I was playing this yeah. game, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's great because the guys have put such an enormous amount of work into the physics system that governs those those zombies and how they move, and so you're never safe anywhere. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, they will climb the walls. They'll climb over buildings. And actually, when we were designing the zombies, we put a lot of thought into the psychology of the zombie. Um, because, of course, they have no fear. There's, they're not like another enemy where you can break their morale. They're not afraid of their own... Uh, they're not afraid of injuring themselves. So if they see you, they will throw themselves from the rooftops. Um, they will climb through burning cars. They'll do anything to get to you, and they won't stop. No, um, that's, that's one of the awesome things that, that we're talking about. Uh, before we got on stage here was the, the zombie AI and yeah. the, how they work and stuff yeah. like that. And I love, I've always liked the idea better uh, of an intelligent or a more like a, a hunter yeah. uh, zomb uh, yeah. zombie. Also, uh, can we call them Zeeks? We can call them Zeeks. <laughs> By the yeah, way, zombies are Zeke. sometimes called Zeeks in yeah. this game and the, in the books and the movies and stuff. <laughs> so let's call them Zeeks from now on. Yeah. You heard it here. Uh, anyway, uh, no, I love the I love that uh, the idea of of hunting like they're they're trying to eat you for food or trying to trying to procreate, which yeah. are like the two 
basis instincts of yeah, yeah, any yeah. living thing. There's no zombie procreation in our game, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'm afraid there's, yeah. There's... Oh, that's, so, that, that's what I meant. I didn't mean, like, making love. <laughs> okay. I meant, like, biting and, tur ah, and turning. Transmission. Okay. That's what I meant. Okay, right, I see. Okay. Get your mind out of the gunner, man. Come I'm on. Like, what can I do? <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, they, do they, because uh, it looks like they flow like a like a ant hive. Yes. Or ant hive. Ant colony. Yeah, there we go. An ant colony, yeah. <laughs> An ant hive, whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's make some metaphors. Yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, it looks like they like work like yes, that. Like they, do. like they swarm. They're not they're not just five hundred uh, kind of independent individuals. They respond as a swarm. Um, and so they will move and flow uh, not just with the, I mean when they see you, they'll move towards you the best way they can, but if there's a wall in the way, they'll pyramid up and try and get over the top of each other and, and over the edge. Um, but uh, also, a lot of them, if you shoot them and they collapse in front of you, the ones behind will just trample over the top of them. Just so, to get to you. Exactly, just to get to you. And I can tell you, when you're standing there and the only thing you've got is a, a, you've run out of primary uh, ammo and you've just got your silenced pistol and you've got 300 <laughs> zombies coming towards you, it's pretty damn scary. Yeah. Well, that's, that's going to be me, obviously, because I'm never, I've never been very accurate. I've always been a, a, a spray and pray kind of guy. Yeah. But thankfully, you said there's a myriad of weapon choices, so yes. I can be the heavy guy. Yes, you can. Like, yeah. Yeah, not well, just the heavy guy. But there's, uh, <laughs> we've got character development, so you've got progression. You, uh, I mean, as you build up experience, you can develop your character. You specialize in a class. You have a skill okay. tree. You've got weapon progression as well, so you're customizing your weapons and building up on that. Um, so there's just so much room for growth in the game. Can you tell us more about the characters? Are these player yeah. created or are these uh, specific characters specific. that you've written? Yeah, so we've written these characters. We've put a lot of thought into their backstories. Um, we try what I like so much about the book is uh, there's a lot of normal people who, who survived in the war because of characteristics they already had. We've gone down the same route. So in the New York episode that we're demoing, you've got uh, Arnetta Larkin, who uh, was a, uh, she's a woman. She's doing uh, cable rigging for a power company. And she's just trying to get home to her kids to see if they're still alive. It's been 15 years since the fall. The city is a corpse. And we are the worms. We burrow in it. Fighting for every useful piece of land. To preserve ourselves from the terrors of the night and the horrors of the day. I know not who can hear my voice. I shall therefore speak a word unto hear. Anyone who dares to steal food will be hanged and their bodies will be exposed. Every day we rise from dust to choose between bad and worse. choices we take to survive will create the world to come. You know the drill. Get to the nearest safe house and wait until dawn. Good night and good luck. Light 2 features a functioning ecosystem that reacts on multiple levels to the things you do and the choices you make. In the example we're about to show you, our protagonist undertakes a mission for the Peacekeepers, one of the many factions active in the city. They want you to negotiate with two survivors who are controlling and hoarding a water supply. Are you going to insult this with another final offer? Let's say you choose to carry out the Peacekeepers' orders, one way or another. Stay back. After this, you'll start seeing a significant change in the city as access to the water supply has allowed the peacekeepers to bring stability and develop the area. There's even running water for the people at street level. Running water? 
and that raises their morale and allows you to replenish your energy on the go. But there's a cost to this. The PKs have a rigid approach to law and order. So while the streets may be safer, it's only safe for those who side with them. So if you get on their bad side... Now let's return to that moment of choice. And instead of killing them, you choose to team up with this group to supply water in the black market. As you will see, this creates a very different set of consequences for the city. With water being a precious currency, it brings you access to new resources and trade. But this in turn attracts the worst type of people to the area. And this is just a single decision, one out of hundreds you'll have to make. But it allows you to carve out your own world, your own city from the apocalypse. Each player's game experience will be unique. And by the way, this is just what happens in the day. At night, well, things tend to get a lot darker. Someone asked me once if I remembered how it all went down. As if it happened so long ago that anyone could forget. So yeah. I remember. I remember when our homes and our towns turned into graveyards. When the wilderness became our only hope for survival. I remember when the planes fell out of the skies. When the trains stopped running. When the turbines shut down and the world went dark. I remember when they put up the razor wire like it was gonna stop anything. When the feds ran out of body bags. Tick, tick, tick. Bro, bro. And some of us sort of lost our minds. I think it's dead. Some lost more than that. Much more. I remember when we lived by a code, when brotherhood meant something, and living meant more than surviving. Goddamn liar! So yeah, I remember how it all went down. No, uh, I don't give a damn about any of that. You know what I remember most? Riding the open road. The smell of your hair. The touch of your skin. I remember you. But those days are gone. Now, I'm a drifter, a bounty hunter, a mercenary. And for me, the broken road is all that's left. But I'll always remember. John, like, um, what, was, what was the inspiration behind this character? Well, a few things. He's, he's broken. So you saw from a couple of trailers that we've released that He's lost someone, and it's scarred him in a way. And, and you know, it's like Jeff would like to say, right. we all, everybody loses people yeah. you know, in these kinds of end-of-the-world scenarios. So what, what's particular about Deacon, though, is that he was an he was a ex-member of an outlaw motorcycle club, and therefore he has a love of the open road. He has a love of motorcycles. Yeah. There's a sense of brotherhood, and you can see that here in these scenes with him and his best friend, Boozer. Um, and so it was that combination that we really that really sort of drew us to this particular character. Sure. Right, we're going to continue to learn about him as you're playing the game, correct? About him and his backstory and why he is the way he is. I mean, the bike is very important, right, as well, like... Yeah, we almost consider the bike to be another character. Yeah. Because you only get one, and you're constantly upgrading it, you're constantly trying to repair it, you need to keep it refueled. And if you lose it, you got to go find it, and you got to, and you, you know, you can't whistle for a new one. So, <laughs> you can't yeah, whistle, right? Like so. a horse. <laughs> yeah, the refueling mechanic is a huge game design choice. I really, really like that. Can you talk more about how important it's going to be to be able to find fuel? Sorry. <laughs> so the refueling mechanic, and actually, you have to find gas to keep your bike going. It's a mechanic we haven't really seen done to this extent before. Can you talk more about that and how it changes the gameplay? Well, like in this demo, one of the things that Jeff, Jeff's taking the run and gun approach. So we we like to call it um, 
uh, sandbox combat. So basically what you can do is you can run and gun, you can stealth your way through, and you, your goal here is to get and find a bike part, right? So you're here actually for kind of a trivial reason. You've risked your friend's life to come and get a part for your bike. And so that shows a little bit about Deacon's character. But then as, as you watch Jeff play through, through this wide linear sequence, um, he can play it a hundred different ways. And if you watch other people play, you'll see that, okay, they didn't take this route. They didn't stop and check the trunk of this police car. Um, and those are kind of like our treasure chests throughout the world. So you're always on the lookout for those because that's how you're going to find ammo and health kits. And then you're seeing one of our stealth mechanics here. If you're quiet, if you, if you crouch walk and you walk up behind an enemy, then you have the opportunity for a stealth takedown. And what can you tell us about the Freakers? Because they're quite quite unique. I and mean, we've seen you know, a fair few undead enemies in video games before. What makes the Freakers unique? And what, them, what was your decision making behind making them the way they are? They're alive. They're alive. <laughs> yeah. They're not zombies, they're alive. And so that, that, you know, that sounds trivial, but it's not, because it basically means we have a full day-night cycle in the game. Right. And they have, si they have things that they do. They have, there's an ecosystem. And they have to eat, they have to drink, they have to hibernate. And so you will find them, like in, in this scenario, you'll see that there's some nests, and Freakers build nests um, for reasons you discover while you're playing the game. And then you can take those nest zones out in order to free up fast travel routes. Um, so, you know, it becomes part of the metagame. But Freakers are evolving. They're living right. creatures who have been affected by this, by this virus. And there's several different types. And some of our trailers you've seen, we've shown the Screamer, which is a female that can have sort of alarm system that will bring in more Freakers. Right. We have uh, the affected bear, so it, it, affect, it affects animals. In our last trailer, we showed Mountain crows, lion and the crows. Right, so yeah. you have, yeah, so the, you know, so it's just, it, it's a wide variety of challenges for the player. And like we said, the world comes for you, and that's part of it, is that these creatures are always after you, and at night they're stronger. Yeah. If it starts raining, they become stronger. But we've seen him, I've seen in previous trailers, uh, Deacon actually utilizing the Freakers as a weapon against his enemy as well. So you can actually use them to your advantage as well, as well as the environment itself. Yeah, absolutely. We call it the Freako system. So in this scenario, there's not a lot of chance for that. But if he were fighting marauders or rippers, right. then he could find a nearby swarm. It's an open world, so you can just explore. You can find other tools like, you know, like, a, like a swarm or a Freaker bear, and you can bring them into an enemy right. camp and watch the, you know, watch the sort of mayhem that, that happens. I guess you've got to be careful, though. You don't you get kind of sucked right. into it. Yeah. <laughs> I like this gun, you guys. So you have melee combat and you have gun combat. Can you talk about how you designed and balanced for both? That's what I the, uh, you know, it's like so many different scenarios require the player to determine how they want to play it, right? So that's why we have like this full set of stealth mechanics. Um, we have a full set of weapons that you can upgrade. And you ha in order to do that, you have to go to the human encampment. So there's, there's survivor encampments in the world, the only places in the world where it's safe and you have to do jobs and missions with them in order to, um, to earn trust. And then once you earn trust, the, the merchants there will sell you that. Ah, I like that. And then they, you know, it's like, and if you want to upgrade your shotgun or you want to upgrade or you want to buy a silencer for it, then you have to have enough trust at that encampment in order to do that. Booster, you there? I found the part. I'm heading nope, got the bike the part. Here, got quite a crowd here at the PlayStation E3 booth. So here you can oh. see, again, so uh, Resident Evil 2 is very near and dear to tons of people's hearts. And just this first shot of the Raccoon City Police Department, like the huge open foyer, like like tons of nostalgia just like hit you. It's pretty crazy. Like not everything is exactly right where you remember it, but that's kind of intentional because this game isn't just a remake. It's a whole new game that we're building off of the foundation that the original game had built. So there's going to be a lot of familiar stuff, but there's going to be a lot of new stuff as well. So. And, and, and that's how you got to do it, yeah, right? I mean, it's been here. close to 20 years, hasn't it? Yep. Right. This game alone, 20 years. Wow. Does it make you feel old, Sid? I feel old when yeah, I, I know. that. That makes me feel a little old. David, Marvin, you there? I found a way out. It's in here. So did you actually go back and re-watch the original and then, like, frame by frame decide what you wanted to keep in and what you wanted to update? De definitely, yeah. Some of them were, like, are, are pretty faithful to the originals, but something like this back in the day on PlayStation, that it was uh, the graphic power. It's not quite the level of PS4 or PS4 Pro just yet. A lot of the movements, characters jumping around, fully voiced stuff. 
Uh, it's a little bit more crude, but definitely classic. But some stuff is new, but uh, some of the originals are there as well. So a big change here is the fact that we're really playing the game. We're Leon Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I think of Leon Kennedy, I think of Resident Evil 2, but I also think of Resident Evil 4. Yes. And you guys have opted for more of a Resident Evil 4 approach to the, uh, just the, uh, the controls. So yep. tell, tell me a little bit about that. Definitely. So the over-the-shoulder thing, we know it's uh, the original game with the fixed camera in the corner. Um, that's very, again, near and dear to people's hearts. But with the over-the-shoulder camera, we're, again, we're building a new game. This isn't a remake of the original. It is a full new game that we really want to push. And the idea of having over-the-shoulder, the pinpoint accuracy of really trying to take down zombies, it felt better for this experience. So that's where we went through. So. But the big difference is the uh, uh, it's less uh, shooter uh, elements compared to the uh, Resident Evil 4. Mm. This is more, you know, like a Metrovania style uh, survival horror, you know, classic gameplay. Yeah. So we actually try to keep the uh, the original, you know, gameplay feel mm. uh, from you know the original. So that's kind of you know, what we were trying to do uh, in this uh, uh, new Resident Evil 2 as well. The lighting feels very similar too. Yes. Yep. Yeah, definitely one of the things, like, so to, to make it, like, you know, people always see the over-the-shoulder first person think of just, like, you know, you're going to be running out the walls and doing backflips and things like that. It is definitely not like that at all. The zombies in this game are, they are tough. And not not just, like, you know, if you see one or two or three, like, I got to look out. If you see one in a hallway and you can't get by them, like, you have to this, you fear for your life type thing because you're probably going to die. So you've really got to be careful with your ammo. And to confirm, these are zombies, a la Resident Evil 2, yes. not Lost Plot. So these are these are your T-virus zombies. Right, right. right. Had to, just had to settle yeah. that one. <laughs> so Leon here is trying to save one of the uh, fellow RPD officers. Uh, it's not looking good, unfortunately. So. Oh, <laughs> that didn't go very well. Now, we know there's going to be some familiar faces in this as well. It's characters that we've seen in other games. We saw that in the uh, showcase asset mm -hmm. just last night. But uh, tell me a little bit about the approach to that. Definitely. So we've got, of course, like, not only do we have Leon. Leon has his own campaign. We also wanted to bring back uh, Claire Redfield. So she's not playable in this demo, but she, as well, is going to get her full playable campaign, too. Awesome. So, um, the rest of the characters are kind of, uh, we haven't really confirmed too much yet. So I advise okay. you to go back and watch the trailer. You can probably kind of make some good guesses, I think, based on those, but uh, we'll leave it to your imagination. <laughs> awesome. This is cool here. This is super tense. So we're getting into here. So every time a zombie bites you, you really feel like you get that over-the-shoulder perspective really helps because you get to see the zombies. You really feel them kind of like bite your neck just like that. Yeah. It kind of disorients you, too, when you get that. So you're spun around. It creates sort of a real sense of like, oh, crap, what's going on? A zombie is actually attacking me. And this is all running in the engine yeah, I of Resident Evil 7, right? It right. is. This is actually the, the RE engine. So the same game that powered RE7 is actually going to be running this game, too, as well. H, are you OK? You going to do this? Don't yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <a> very <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so again, like, they are no joke. Like, you get bit once or twice, and it's, it's, you're almost done. So. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. Look at this, you know, like, restroom. We added the restroom. Yeah, so that was yeah. one thing that was really uh, in the PS1 game, it was one of those ones. It's limitations yeah. back in the day, but there were actually no restrooms <laughs> in the original uh, PlayStation. Right. That's a good point, yeah. actually. Right? So in this demo, we wanted to make sure that we have a, a fully functioning bathroom. We put a little treat inside there for you, or a first aid spray. That's a that's a back of box. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. If I've ever heard of one. I noticed he just picked up some first aid spray before. A lot of what I love about survival horror games is the limited supplies. You really have to like think things through. Is that an element that you guys are working with? Yeah. Those are the those are sort of like the emergency last minute things. But again, like it is it is really survival horror to its fullest. Like, you're going to need to conserve those. As you can see in his inventory there, he only had a handful of bullets. So if you run out of bullets, there's no, like, we did add certain things, like, you know, if you find a la RE7 some gunpowder and some other resources, you can make more. But for, if you're out, you're pretty much going to be out. So really wanted to drive home the survival aspect of this game. Is there a, a knife? Is, is that included? There is. So a little bit later, if we get far enough, we will show you the knife. It functions okay. a way similar to when we did the original uh, Resident Evil 1 remake. So instead of just being something that you use, and you can you can slash it to keep guys at bay, but these guys are ironclad, and that's <laughs> generally probably not the best idea. Yeah. If you do get grappled, you get the chance to uh, use it as sort of an emergency weapon to get rid of that zombie Got and it. get them off you. Cool. But if it's still, it does have a, a little bit of durability as well. So it. if it's still durable enough, you can actually pick the knife up off the zombies that you just killed, get a little bit more out of it too. So interesting. What other sort of mechanical tweaks and changes have you are you guys implementing here that uh, longtime fans might notice? 
Yeah, definitely. Kana-san, you want to take this one? Well, yeah, so the uh, gameplay mechanics. So since then, we actually feature uh, now, you know, over the uh, shoulder camera view. So the, um, we're actually um, trying to uh, uh, put like, more kind of like uh, intense uh, combat, you know, feel mm -hmm. uh, against the uh, zombies. So, uh, and also the, uh, the way, you know, like Leon is actually, you know, shooting is kind of like more like natural. Uh, feel more close to the uh, like Resident Evil 7 kind of combat style. Mm. Yeah. There is some stuff a little bit later in the demo too where uh, it wasn't present in the original game where it's a little bit it kind of, uh, again, pushing that survival aspect of the game. You can find like wooden boards to board up windows to choose whether you want to board up that one. If that zombie is a really problem for you, um, otherwise, you can save it later in case something else comes up. But it really is about that choice of how do you want to play. That is uh, cool. That's something I've always wanted to see in more like zombie games. Is right. Yeah. You to, uh, fortify. Yeah. yeah what fortify I mean. stuff. Because that's like the first thing you're going to do, right? If you were in a real zombie. Sure. Board everything up. And you're you know, obviously Sid and I are, are, are big Resident Evil fans. But for those out there that maybe haven't, you know, approached the franchise before or something, do you feel like this is a good title to start with? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, this this is almost the gen like Resident Evil 2 is obviously the second game in the franchise, but really is sort of the genesis of where a lot of the groundswell around the brand came up. So again, if if you haven't played this title before, the story is about Raccoon City is a midwestern town. A mysterious outbreak hits. Zombies are everywhere. It's Leon, the guy with the RPG vest on here. It's his first day on the job as a cop, and he's basically coming to work and. What happened? <laughs> There's zombies everywhere. He's finding his com comrades are in, basically going through hell. Um, and Claire Redfield, who is the other character in the game, she's a college student. She's looking for her brother Chris, who works in the special Got forces. Um, and they basically fates intersect, and you'll be able to sort of see each other's perspectives throughout the game. So, so now he's got the uh, uh, combat knife. Yes. From, uh, so here we have our knife. Yeah. <laughs> that we get from Marvin. Marvin, yes. nested with sin. Free them that they may know my... the other apostate. Clip her wings.
She's one of them. Lev. your backs. 